Now, new Creamy Prom, the first and only permanent with homogenized waving cream. And White Rain, the rainwater soft lotion shampoo that leaves your hair sunshine bright. Present Armis Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Armis Brooks Transcribed. But first, ordinary home permanents use thin, drippy waving solutions like this. They often leave your hair dry and frizzy, hard to manage, but not anymore. Because now you have new Creamy Prom. It's creamy, creamy, creamy. New Creamy Prom, the first permanent with homogenized waving cream. Yes, a thick waving cream, rich with costly conditioning ingredients. That's why new Creamy Prom actually waves new softness and manageability right into your hair. Leaves your hair softer, more manageable, in better condition than any other permanent you ever had. New Creamy Prom leaves your hair soft as a whisper. Soft as a whisper. I guarantee your hair never combed so soft, behaved so beautifully after a brand new permanent. Because only new Creamy Prom has homogenized waving cream to wave new softness and manageability right into your hair. And Prom's homogenized waving cream makes it so easy. There's no dripping, no rinsing, no timing, no messy neutralizer. Just smooth it on, roll it up, you've got yourself a Prom. Get new creamy Prom in the brand new package. And even if you're between permanents, don't wait to try Prom's homogenized waving cream. Get the new creamy Prom end curl kit right now. Creamy, creamy Prom. <laughs> Well, many of the nation's schools commence a new semester on Monday, and Madison High School, where Armis Brooks teaches English, is one of them. Although the others usually dispense with classes on the last day or two of the old term, Madison did not. No, indeed. Our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, saw to that. In fact, he was quite chagrined when a cloudburst last Friday kept almost all of the student body at home. Even members of the faculty didn't get down, except a handful of teachers, me, since Mr. Conklin didn't show up until quite late, I took it upon myself to dismiss the few soaked pupils who were floating around the halls. Saturday morning at breakfast, I discussed the situation with my landlady. And what did Mr. Conklin say when you told him you'd cancel school for the day, Connie? He didn't say a word, Mrs. Davis, until he came down off the ceiling. <laughs> then he accused me of usurping his function as principal and throwing a monkey wrench into his plan for getting the jump on the other schools. What sort of a plan did he have, dear? Well, he felt that the schedule should be revised and the classes assigned before the first day of the new semester. Hence, we have all been invited to appear at school today. But this is Saturday. Mr. Conklin hasn't the authority to make anybody come to school. He doesn't make anybody come. He's put it on a voluntary basis. For both the student body and the faculty, it's strictly optional. Really? Of course. Come or die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's probably Walter Denton. He's giving me a lift down to school. Come in, Walter! It certainly is nice of Walter to call for you this morning. Yes, it is, considering that I made it quite clear to him that his driving me was strictly optional. Really? Of course. Be here or flunk. <laughs> hi, Mrs. Davis. Oh, hi, Walter. And to you, most revered and admired of all local educators, I bow deeply from the waist. Thank you, and get your head out of the milk pitcher. <laughs> I'll go fix a nice plate of bacon and eggs for you, Walter. Well, this is great. Oh, what better way to start off the day than a resounding second breakfast with my favorite school teacher? For a kid who's going to school on Saturday, you're pretty chipper, Walter. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Miss Brooks. I'm not going to school today. None of the students are. We held a mass meeting last night and decided that the only course to pursue was open rebellion. What? The issues are clear, Miss Brooks. And even though we all recognize this for the tyranny it is, it is a short-lived tyranny. Our spokesman, elected unanimously at last night's meeting, will see to that. Spokesman? Whom did you elect? 
let me be the first to congratulate you. <laughs> well, now, what more logical choice to slay the tyrant? Now, wait a second, Walter. I'm in enough hot water now for canceling school yesterday. Well, that was different. It was an emergency. Plus which, nobody was there anyway. But don't worry about it now. We can plan our campaign on the way down to school. I thought you said you weren't going. Well, of course I'm going. I'm in charge of the picket line. <laughs> As one of the organizers of this rebellion, it's up to me to see that the protest meeting this morning goes off without a flaw. <laughs> Well, here we are, Miss Brooks. For a group who decided not to come to school today, there's quite a crowd on the campus. Yeah, I wonder where Stretch Snodgrass is. Oh, we're going to hang a dummy of Mr. Conklin in effigy, and he's supposed to carry the dummy to the flagpole. Well, as Madison's star athlete, he deserves the honor. But let me offer a word of caution, Walter. What's that, Miss Brooks? Well, I don't want to cast any aspersions on Stretch's mentality... But if he's carrying the dummy, be very careful who you string up. <laughs> oh, oh, here he is. Hi, Stretch. Hi, Walter. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Stretch. I made up a slogan for one of the picket signs, Walter, but I'm afraid it might be a teeny-weeny bit disrespectful. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Yeah, yeah, how, how does it go? Well, it goes, Mr. Conklin is very unfair not to set us free. He's got crazy mixed-up bats in his own belfry. <laughs> Oh, I don't think a slogan like that's too disrespectful to you, Miss Brooks. Not if you want to finish your education in another part of the state. <laughs> oh, the real fun will come later, Miss Brooks. We're going to hang Mr. Conklin in a figgy. <laughs> in a what? Oh, in a figgy. Well, he fits in the figgy. <laughs> no. No, he means in effigy, Miss Brooks. Oh. I kind of liked it the other way. Yeah, I better get the thing now. See you later, Miss Brooks. Bye, Walter. That's yeah, so on, pal. Well, everything's rolling right along. Let's see if Mr. Conklin got here yet. Hello, Miss Brooks. Walter. Well, I just talked to Daddy, and he's livid. He blames you for this entire insurrection, Miss Brooks. Me? <laughs> Daddy says if you hadn't canceled school yesterday, this wouldn't have happened. You're in an awful spot. Oh, gosh. I didn't mean to get you into such a jam, Miss Brooks. Well, I'm in it, and it's up to me to get out of it. Please don't think I'm a Benedict Arnold, but I'd better get up on the school steps and have a little talk with some of these strikers. Well, I probably won't do any good, but I can't blame you for trying. Uh, students... Students, boys and girls, I'd like to talk to you for just a minute. Quiet, please. Thank you. Now, I'm sure you all have as much pride in your school as any members of the faculty have, or as its principal, Mr. Conklin, has. Please, please. I'm just trying to tell you that by working for a few hours today, we can be prepared to launch our new semester on Monday with a minimum of confusion, thus assuring us of a better start toward that degree of scholastic excellence which has always prevailed at Madison High. Remember, students, education is your sacred heritage, your guaranteed right under the Constitution, as well as the Bill of Rights, which ensures us all of the benefits and privileges which every American has come to feel is his birthright. And so, Miss Brooks, I hold you personally responsible for the fact that these malcontents are not in their classrooms yet. But, Mr. Conklin, I tried to get... Excuse me. This is Osgood Conklin's office, Mr. Conklin himself speaking. Hello, Conklin. This is Mr. Stone at the Board of Education. Oh, hello, Mr. Stone. <laughs> How's every I've little... not time for chit-chat. <laughs> A rather disturbing rumor has reached me to the effect that you've summoned your student body to school today. My student body? You realize, of course, that such an action on your part without sanction from the board would constitute a breach of authority that could lead to your immediate dismissal. Oh, yes, sir, of course. Now, I can't for the life of me imagine where these ridiculous rumors begin. Why, I'm here all alone, not another soul in the office. <laughs> Bless you. Shut up. 
Oh, I- I'm sorry, sir, my cat has a cold. <laughs> But about that rumor, the only reason I'm in the office is to get out some letters. Ah, good. I thought you'd have better sense than to do anything that autocratic. Oh, uh, by the way, Osgood, I'll be in your neighborhood in a little while. Perhaps I'll drop in to discuss some board matters with you. Fine, Mr. Stone. That'll be just grand. I look forward to seeing you. Very well. Goodbye, Osgood. Goodbye, Mr. Stone. Well, Miss Brooks, sometimes everything happens for the best. Because of you, no child has set foot in this building as yet. Is that right? Well, I guess not, Mr. Conklin, but if you wait I'll a little while... I'll be frank with you, Miss Brooks. If they had come in, it could have meant my dismissal. I don't understand Mr. Stone's attitude, but, well, go out to your youthful charges and inform them that there is no school today. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Conklin. You did it, Miss Brooks. I didn't think you could do it, but you did it. What are you talking about, Denton? Oh, she was wonderful, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks made a speech a few minutes ago that'll go down in Madison's history. Yes, sir, every student is in his or her classroom right now, and believe me, wild horses couldn't drag them out of this school today. (laughs) Well, Miss Brooks, you heard the boy. Thanks to your speech, wild horses couldn't drag them out of school today. And now, young woman, may I ask what you propose to do? Step aside, Mr. Conklin. White rain, white rain. The familiar White Rain song that sings of rainwater soft shampooing and hair that is sunshine bright. You know, there's a reason why White Rain is so special. Because White Rain is a gentle, rich lotion shampoo. So gentle, it's like washing your hair in softest rainwater. White Rain gives you rainwater soft suds, rich and refreshing. White Rain gives you quick, clean, rainwater clean rinsing. And white rain always leaves your hair soft as a cloud, easy to manage, sparkling with natural highlights. Find out for yourself. Try white rain today. Remember, for hair bright as sunshine, look for the blue carton with a white umbrella on it. Get white rain lotion shampoo. White rain, white rain, use new white rain shampoo tonight. And tomorrow your hair will be sunshine bright. White rain, white rain. Well, I told Walter Denton to corral the students and herd them into the cafeteria. While I was waiting for them to assemble, I corralled Mr. Boynton and herded him into a corner table. Over a cup of coffee, I told him of Mr. Conklin's dilemma. As usual, Mr. Boynton was extremely sympathetic. So you see, if these kids don't go home at once, Mr. Conklin can get in big trouble with the board. Well, that's his worry. He should have known better than to ask students to come to school on Saturday, let alone the faculty. I wish he would let alone the faculty. (laughs) But we're in it now, at least I am, up to our necks. At least my neck. Fine English teacher. Well, I don't like to see you distressed about it. Well, I got most of the kids in, Miss Brooks. Oh, hi, Mr. Boynton. Hello, Walter. I'll hold this chair for you, Miss Brooks. Go ahead. Get up on it and make your speech. Thanks, Walter. Students, attention, please. I've called you here for some very good news. You don't have to stay in school today. But, Miss Brooks, after your speech this morning, we want to stay. Oh, don't you believe it. This, after all, is Saturday, a holiday. One to which you are not only entitled by law, but which is guaranteed to you by the Constitution, by the Bill of Rights, and every other document so carefully prepared to safeguard the interests of you, the future leaders of a great nation. Hello? Oh, hello, Osgood. This is Mr. Stone. I'm afraid I won't be able to drop in on you today after all. My wife's been driving my car all week, and it's pretty well shot. Yes, I've seen her. (laughs) Your car. I'm I'm, uh, sorry you can't drop in, though, Mr. Stone. 
But when you do pay us a visit, you'll find as smooth a running education operation as there is in this country. I'm sure of it, Osgood. Well, goodbye for now. Goodbye, sir, and thank you for calling. Come in. It's me, Mr. Conklin. I told the students that they can go home any time they want to. What? Have they left yet? Well, no, sir. Most of them are still in the cafeteria, but... They're they're... going to pay for this morning's protest meeting. Mr. Stone isn't coming down after all. So you can just tell those recalcitrant mischief makers that they're staying here until 4 p.m. But, Mr. Conklin, I can't make another speech. It's an order, Miss Brooks. This, Miss... And so by working for a few hours today, we can be assured of a better start toward that degree of scholastic excellence which has always prevailed at Madison High. Remember, students, education is your sacred heritage, your guaranteed right under the Constitution, as well as the Bill of Rights, which ensures us all the benefits and privileges which every American has come to feel is his birthright. Oh, gosh, Stretch, I don't like to cross Miss Brooks up, but we just got to get out of school today. Yeah, but we're all on detention, Walter. We got to stay till 4 p.m. What makes me mad, we didn't even get to burn Mr. Conklin in a figgy. <laughs> yeah, in a, yeah, I know it, Stretch. Oh, hey, wait a minute. You just gave me an idea. Suppose we had a fire drill. Then when we all ran out of school, we could just forget to stop running until we got home. <laughs> Yeah, but the control for the fire alarm bell is in Mr. Conklin's office. And he ain't going to ring it for no reason. Then let's give him a reason. You mean start a fire? No, not a real fire. Stretch a fake one. We can get some dry ice in the cafeteria kitchen and drop it in a bucket of water. Ooh, that makes the most beautiful smoke you ever saw. And then we just fan it under old Marblehead's door until it fills his office. <laughs> and then he comes out of his door and hits us with the bucket. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. We remove the screws from his doorknob from the outside. Then when he tries to open the door, the knob comes away in his hand, and Conklin falls right on his conk. (laughs) Boy, you should get a scholarship. Our Miss Brooks will return in a moment. You can send a minute of truth behind the Iron Curtain with the truth dollars you give to Crusade for Freedom. Seventy million inhabitants of the Iron Curtain countries, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, are being attacked with a daily assault of communist propaganda. We can arm these captive peoples with the most vital and effective instrument of opposition, truth. For only truth can combat the daily falsehoods that undermine the instinct for liberty and sow the seeds of fear. The daily broadcasts of Radio Free Europe are beamed more than 20 hours a day through the Iron Curtain to bring the truth to captive countries. These messages are reinforced by the Free Europe Press that circulates news to satellite nations by means of balloons dropping millions of miniature newspapers in populated areas. You can communicate your friendship, sympathy, and moral support to the people struggling under the Soviet yoke. Fight communism in its own backyard by sending your truth dollars to Crusade for Freedom care of your local postmaster. Well, Walter Denton and Stretch Snodgrass decided that the quickest way to get the kids out of school for the day was to create a pseudo-fire with dry ice. They would put the ice in a bucket, fan the smoke under Mr. Conklin's door, and try to convince him it was a real fire. A little later that morning, Miss Brooks was in her principal's office. So, Miss Brooks, you've informed the student body that they're all under detention until four? Yes, sir, I did. But suppose Mr. Stone does come over and discovers that you're keeping us all in school on a holiday. Ah, but he won't, Miss Brooks. He has no way to get here. His car broke down. Suppose he decided to walk over. Walk over? That's ridiculous. Well, hello, Conklin. Mr. Stone. (laughs) I decided to walk over. That's ridiculous. I mean, hello, Mr. Stone. How are you? Fine, thanks, Miss Brooks. There are several things... What was that? There must be someone loitering in the hall. Oh, impossible. There's no one in school today. But I swear I just saw that doorknob turning. Turning into what? 
<laughs> and what's that swirling in under the door? Oh, that's nothing but smoke. Yes, that's all it is, just smoke. Oh, of course, that's all it is, smoke. Smoke! <laughs> Good heavens, the school's on fire. Oh, no. Let's get out of here. Follow me. Oh! <laughs> Why, the, the doorknob came away in his hand. Here, let me help you up, Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone. He fell on the back of his head. He's unconscious. Well, quick, Miss Brooks. Crawl through the window and run around and open the door from the outside. I'll try to revive Mr. Stone. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, the smoke's getting pretty thick in here. <laughs> I, can, I can hardly see you, Miss Brooks. I can't see you at all, Mr. Conklin. <coughs> I never could. <laughs> Gosh, Walter, we've been fanning smoke under that door for five minutes now, and he ain't rung the fire alarm yet. Relax, Stretch. With the fog he's in, it'll take him a little while to notice the smoke. <laughs> you don't think Mr. Conklin has become asphyxicated, do you? <laughs> That would be too much to hope for. But if he is axe-peaksicated, maybe you ought to open the door and haul him out of there. Please, let's not spoil a perfectly good axe-peaksication. <laughs> oh, Miss Brooks! We're cooked. Oh, hey, it's not a real fire, Miss Brooks. It's just a dry ice and water fire. See, we were trying to get Mr. Conklin to ring the fire alarm so we could escape from school in the confusion. <laughs> uh, there's a lot you can do on Saturday on the outside. Gosh, Miss Brooks, now that you caught us, what are you going to do? Hand me that newspaper. I'll fan the smoke for a while. <laughs> Gee, you're a swell sport, Miss Brooks. You think he'll ring the alarm pretty soon? Well, maybe he needs a little encouragement. Uh, keep up your courage, Mr. Conklin. I'm fighting my way through the flames. That ought to get a rise out of old Marblehead. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Brooks. Scare him some more. I'm trying to reach you, Mr. Conklin, but the heat is terrific. Perhaps I could get you a nice, cool lemonade, Miss Brooks. Oh, not right now, thanks. I've got to keep fanning this dry ice until those... Mr. Conklin! Now, Miss Brooks, if you're quite finished fighting your way through the place... Oh, oh you got here in the nick of time, Mr. Conklin. I just put the fire out. Yeah, me too. Well, I better be getting back to my classroom now. Yeah, me too. Stand where you are, you culprits. Why, Mr. Conklin, you should thank these boys for what they've done. Thank them? Certainly. When Walter and Stretch realized the trouble you'd get into with Mr. Stone, they took this means of detaining him until the students cleared out. Sure. As long as Mr. Stone is locked in there, you're safe. Hand me that newspaper. I'll fan the smoke for a while. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Conklin. Pour some more water on that dry ice snodgrass. You, Denton. See that all the classrooms are emptied and report back to me. Yes, sir. I'll clear them out and nothing flat. <laughs> Mr. Stone will have to get up pretty early in the morning to outsmart old Marblehead. <laughs> <I'll be conquering. laughs> Mr. Conklin, you're not getting enough smoke under the door. Oh, well, this newspaper is too flexible. Get me something firmer to pan the smoke with. Perhaps you'd like to use my hat, Conklin. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Stone. That should work much better than this. Thank you, Mr. Stone! <laughs> Conklin, I will discuss this matter with you privately in your office. But Mr. Stone... Follow me, sir. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> the away in his hand again. Mr. Stone, say something. He's unconscious, Miss Brooks. What do I do now? In an emergency like this, there's only one thing to do. Run, do not walk, to the nearest employment agency. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, transcribed, was produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Joe Swillen and Al Lewis with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Bob Rockwell, Ann Whitfield, Leonard Smith, and Joseph Kearns. Be sure to be with us next week for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Thank <laughs> you.